Welcome! In this video I'm going to be solving problem 6.8 as it appears in Griffith's third edition of the book Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now this problem states the following. Suppose we perturb the infinite cubical well by putting a delta function bump at the point a over 4, comma a over 2, comma 3a over 4. Now that is the same as just writing down the Hamiltonian here plus a few constants. So the perturbation Hamiltonian is h prime equal to a cubed v0 times delta function a x minus a fourth, delta function y minus a over 2, delta function z minus 3a over 4. And given this, we need to find the first order corrections to the energy of the ground state and the first excited state. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here, starting of course for the ground state, is to determine whether or not this is degenerate. Now, you might know the answer already if you remember um, what the infinite cu uh, cubicle will look like. But just in case you forgot, I'm going to just do it anyways. So the energy levels for the infinite cubicle well looked as follows. So for the end state, the unperturbed energy levels are n. Well, the, since this is three-dimensional, we have to consider all three dimensions. So we have nx squared plus ny squared plus nz squared. And this times pi squared h bar squared over 2m a squared. Okay, so these are the energy levels. So this means that the ground state, so E0, 0, okay, so the ground state is going to be, well, each one of these ends is going to be 1, so we will have 3 pi squared h bar squared over 2m a squared. Okay, we actually discussed this in the previous video, so that's why I'm going a bit faster here with a reminder. Um, so what this means, the important takeaway here is that the ground state is non-degenerate. Okay, so this means we can use the mechanism of non-degenerate perturbation theory to find the first order corrections to the energy. So how did that go? So that, that meant that to find the first order correction to the ground state energy, right, first order correction, ground state, that, that's my notation, we need to take the inner product between our wave functions of the uh, of the ground state and sandwich it with our Hamiltonian, okay? Our per perturbation Hamiltonian, of course. And this is what we have to do. So as I mentioned, that is a very, very, very important formula that, that you must not only remember, but also understand. And what were our wave functions? Well, the wave function for the end state, of course, an x, in y and in z. Now for the infinite cubicle, well, they are 2 over a to the 3 over 2 power. And then we have a sine of, it's actually, yeah, sine of nx pi over ax sine of ny pi over ay and sine and z pi over a z. Okay, so these are the wave functions that I hope you understand where they come from. It's simply the wave function of the infinite cu cubicle, uh, sorry, of the infinite square well, but in three dimensions, so um, that's why it's tripled. And now this, but with the ends, of course, corresponding to the ground state, so n, x, y, and z equal to 1, is what we now have to plug into this equation right here. And that's what we're going to do right now. So the first order correction to the ground state is going to be now the integral of this conjugate times the Hamiltonian times this other thing conjugate. So what is that? So that's going to be, well, let's pull all the constants in front. So 2a cubed, since this term is going to be squared and the square root goes away. So 2a cubed. Then from our Hamiltonian, we have a cubed and v0. So times a cubed times v0. And now comes everything that is going to be inside of the integral. So we are going to have a triple integrals. I'm just going to put everything in there from 0 to a, all of them. And then what do we have? In the x direction, we have sine, well, nx, of course, but n is 1, so no need to write it down, pi ax. And this is, of course, squared, since we have one here, one here, and it, the, it's real, so uh, it's going to, the conjugate is simply the same, so we just get it squared, uh, times sine of pi y over a, and this is squared as well, and sine of 
pi z over a squared. And now comes the part from Hamiltonian, so the delta functions. I'm just going write to write them down here. So times delta of x, I think it was minus a over 4. Then y minus a over 2. I'll check in a second to make sure. z minus 3a over 4 or 2. OK, need to check now. Um, OK, yes, th that's what it is. And of course, dx, dy, dz. OK, so this is what we now have to integrate. And while it might look intimidating, please don't panic, because we are dealing with delta functions. And delta functions are your friends. They destroy the integrals, because they are 0 everywhere except for the one place where they are not. So the integral, since it is a sum over everything, every possible value of the function, you're simply going to get your function that you're integrating evaluated at the point at which the delta function is not 0. So what does this mean exactly? Well, the constants here, of course, they're going to be the same. So the a cubes cancel, we get 8v0. And then we have the integral. So this first part is now sine squared of pi over a. And x is now the only value of x where it isn't 0. So that is a over 4. So a over 4. And then we have times sine squared of pi over a, and the only value where y is not 0 is a over 2, times sine squared of, now comes uh, this part right here, which is pi over a once again, times the only um, place where z is not 0, which is 3a over 4. OK, so what is each one of these signs? So here the a's of course cancel out, so we get sine of pi over 4. Uh, sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. And since it is squared, we get square root of 2 over 2 squared, which is simply 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So the first sign is simply 1 half. Now this one right here, we get pi over 2. So it's sine squared of pi over 2. and sine of pi over 2 is 1, so 1 squared is still 1. And right here we get uh, sine of 3 pi over 4, and that is also square root of 2 over 2, which squared is also 1 half. So the first uh, order correction to the ground state energy is going to be 1 fourth times 8 v0, so basically just 2 v0. All right, so that is the first order correction to the uh, energy of the ground state. So OK, so that, that wasn't that bad. Now let's just grab our wave function, because now comes the tricky part. We have to deal with the first excited states. Notice the S in what I just said. First excited states. Because the energy, as we saw, is this formula right here. So that means, as we mentioned in the previous video, that the first excited state we get either when this is 2, when this is 2, or when this is 2. So it can be 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1. OK, so those are our possibilities. So we have three possible um, different states that have the same energy. So the first excited state is triply degenerate. So we have to use the mechanism of degenerate perturbation theory. Now, what was that? We saw that a few videos ago. What we have to do is we have to find this matrix. Uh, I think we call it W, where each one of its elements, where WAA, WAB, WAC, and well, WAB, whoop, sorry, BA, not AB, BA, sorry. WBA, BB, W, this is BC, CA, CB, and CC. Okay? We have to find each one of those uh, matrix elements. And what was the formula for each one of them? Well, the formula, as, as you know, the, this was just an abbreviation. So WIJ, right, in general, this is the wave function, right, uh, the ith j function 
sandwiched in the inner product with the perturbation Hamiltonian and Psi j. So, and what do I mean by i and j? What I mean is that each one of these states will have a label. So for example, this first one is going to be Psi a, this one right here is going to be Psi b, and this one right here is going to be Psi c, okay? It doesn't matter which one you call uh, whichever order you, uh, it doesn't matter, just call them Psi a, psi, psi b, Psi c, it doesn't matter if this is a, this is a, or this is a, it's the same, okay? You might get a, a slightly different uh, matrix here, um, but when we take the determinant, it's going to be the same, so, you know, don't, don't worry. All right, so we now have to use this formula, but of course, with Psi a and Psi j being a, b, or c, depending to which matrix element we are uh, talking about, okay? Um, so what do we have? Let's go first with WAA. So WAA is, I'm going to write this explicitly just to make sure that it's super clear. So WAA is going to be Psi A H prime Psi A. Now, what was Psi A? I'm going to just go ahead and write it down explicitly. Psi A, this is square, or maybe I'll just write like this. It's 2 over A to the 3 over 2 power times sine of. And now be very careful. So psi a was 1, 1, 2. So it's pi x over a because n x is 1, sine of pi y over a because n y is 1, sine of pi z over a. But now n z is 2, so we need to add a 2 in here. Okay, so that is the, the difference. And now we do basically the same thing that we did before, right? Doing this integral right here. And what is this integral going to be? Well, the integral, so w a a, this is going to be, well, all of the constants, the constants are the same as before. So we're going to end up with a v zero in front. And then we have this triple integral from zero to a of, and now comes the tricky part. We have to make sure that we uh, pair all these signs correctly. So we get well, we are just doing the integral of, of Psi A conjugate times Psi A, so it, it's just this squared. So in this particular case, there isn't too much new. So it's going to be sine squared of Pi X over A times sine squared of Pi Y over A times sine squared of 2 Pi Z over A. And of course, time all of our delta functions, so delta X minus A over 4 um, delta y minus a over 2, delta z minus, and this was 3a over 4, and of course dx dy dz. Okay, now what is this integral? Now this is the same as before, okay, so this term right here is exactly the same that we integrated in the previous integral. Let me see if I find it right here. It's still sine squared pi a over uh, pi over, over a times x times the delta function so the first sign you can you can go ahead and just you know do the integration yourself it's not long or anything but since we already did it no need to do it again so this first part well the a v0 of course is in front this is one half similarly this sign is one right because it's going to be sine uh, squared of pi over a times the only place where y is not zero, which is a over two. So we get pi over a times a over two, which is sine of pi over two, which is one. And of course you squared, it, it's still one. The difference now is here. So this time we're going to get sine squared of two pi over a times the only place where z is not zero, which is three a over four. Okay, so this two cancels out part of this, which is going to be now sine of 3a over 2, uh, and that's squared. And sine of, th uh, sorry, of 3 pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2, that is minus 1, but our sine is squared, so the minus sine cancels out, and we get 1. Okay, so the correction waa is going to be 1 half times 8v0, or simply 4v0. All right? That is WAA. And now we're going to do the, actually, let me go back so I can use uh, that same part. So WAA is 4V0. All right. Now let me just 
use this exact um, integral actually, but just modify it accordingly for each one of the following uh, calculations. So now let's go for WAB. Now what is WAB? What is this is going to be now instead of psi AA over here, we're going to get psi AB, which is instead of an A here, it's going to be psi B. And what is psi B? Psi B is the same as psi A, except now that the state that we defined as psi B is one to one. So instead of having a two right here, the psi B has a two in here. So now when we write this integral down, there's going to be a few differences. Um, so let's see. Now, instead of this part right here being sine squared, actually, let me maybe just go ahead and rewrite all of that to make sure that I do not confuse you. OK, so both of these states have sine of pi x over a. OK, that is that's the same. How do we know it? Because both of them start with one and x is one for both of them. Then what is n1? Well, for one of them, uh, sorry, n, ny. For one of them, ny is 1, so we get pi y over a. But for the other one, ny is 2, so we get 2 pi y over a. And similarly for z. So for 1, we get sine of pi z over a. And for the other one, we get sine of 2 pi z over a. And that is the only difference. That's why I didn't want to go too far away, so we can just base our calculations on this integral right here. And now we have to take a look at each one of these terms. So um, wait, I'm actually missing uh, the first delta function. I need to add it here. Um, delta x minus a over 4. OK, so this sign, once again, it's the same, so it's still going to be 1 half. Now, what about these signs? So this first part right here is going to be sine of um, what is y? It's a over 2. So we get pi over a times a over 2, which is going to be sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So once again, this part right here is 1. Now, this sine right there is going to be sine of 2 pi over a times a over 2. So the a's cancel out, the 2's cancel out, and we are left with sine of pi, which is 0. So we don't need to go any further than this, because 0 times any number is 0. So whatever comes next, it doesn't matter. It's going to be 0. OK, so WAB is 0. And for that reason, WBA is also 0, as we discussed in the previous uh, videos, because, of course, W A B A is simply the complex conjugate of this. And since this is a real amount, it's going to be the same. OK, so now let's go back and uh, plug that into our matrix. So both W A B and W B A are zero. Um, actually, let me use the red. All right. What do we have now? Well, now let's go with W A C. So Let's once again go back to this part right here and just write down WAC. So WAC is going to be, of course, this same thing here, but with Psi C here. All right, what is that? Well, WAC, um, well, Psi C is going to be the state, um, where did we write it down? Here. So Psi C is 2, 1, 1. So Nx is 2, Ny is 1, Nz is 1. That is what we defined. So it's going to look like this, except that now there's going to be a 2 in here. All right, so there's going to be 2 pi x over a for Psi C. That's the difference. And we're going to do this same integral. So now. Of course, the difference is going to be that Psi A has a 2 in, in this Z part. So this Z, the signs of Z will be the same. However, now both of them have Y and Y equal to 1. So we are once again left with sine squared of pi Y over A. Okay, and for the X part, now we have 
one of the wave functions that had that has n x equal to one. So we get sine of um, pi over a times x times the other one that has it with a two. So two pi over a x. And that's it. That's the difference. So now we are just going to go ahead and calculate this integral once again. So what is it? Now the x part we're going to get sine of pi over a times a over four, right? The only place where it isn't zero. That does not look like a four. Okay, so the a's cancel out, we get sine of pi over four, which is square root of two over two. Square root of two over two. Okay, then we have sine of two pi x over a, but of course with the x replaced by the only value where it isn't zero. So sine of two pi a times a over four. So the a's cancel out and we get sine of pi over two, which is one. So no need to write it down. Next, we get this sine squared of pi y over a, but we have already calculated that before. So we don't really need to look at it again. We know that it is one. Of course, you can check it again, but we know it's one. So once again, times one, which we don't really need to write down. Then comes the z part. And this, well, I think we did it already, but no, just to make sure that we don't make any mistakes, let's take another look at it. So sine of pi over a times three a over four, the a's cancel out and we get three pi over four, which is square root of two over two. And then we have sine of two pi over a times three a over four, and the a's cancel out, this two uh, diminishes this, and we get sine of three pi over two, which is going to be minus one. All right, so this means that now we have eight v zero times, this is going to be one half, times minus one. So we are left with minus four v zero. And this is of course the same as WCA, right? Because WCA is psi C H prime, oh, running out of space here. Um, well, maybe let me move it. WCA H prime uh, psi A, which is of course the same when you take the complex conjugate as of this, but you know, real numbers, so it doesn't change anything. So both of them are the same. So now let's plug it into our um, little matrix here, WCA and WAC. So it's minus 4V0 and minus 4V0. Okay, so we still need to take a look at WBB, WBC and WCC. Of course, this one's going to be the same. So, you know, let's, let's go for it, man. This is what we're here for. Um, okay, so now let's go for WBC. So WBC, what is that going to be? Let me maybe write it down from scratch just to make sure that, you know, we're not getting too confused here with all of our previous annotations. Okay, so WBC, these are now the states that correspond to one, two, one and two, one, one. So the signs we will have a sine squared since both of them will be sine of pi z over a. Um, but one of these x's and one of these y's will have a two in it. So we will get sine of pi x over a and then sine of two pi x over a. And similarly for y, sine of pi y over a times sine of two pi y over a and finally sine squared of pi z over a. Okay, nice. So that is our integral and some of these things we already recognize. So this sine of pi x over a is going to give us a square root of two over two. We already have seen that before. Um, the This sign right here, um, it gave us pi over Two, I believe. Let me let me double check that actually. Um, so times sine of two pi over a times a over two. This is looking like a sine of pi 
Yeah, that looks like a sign of pi, so this means that this whole thing is zero, actually. So that, that really speeds things up for us. So <laughs> all of WBC is zero because this part right here is zero when we uh, put the delta function in. So WCB is also zero. Okay, so WAB and BC, uh, sorry, BC and CB are both zero. Okay, now we're left with WBB and WCC, which means one to one and one to one, which is WBB. Let's go with that one first. So WBB, right, WBB is going to be Psi B and Psi B. And just to make sure, I'm gonna write it down explicitly here. So Psi B is going to be now the same thing, except that the two is now in the y part. And we get this beast squared. So our integral is now going to be, this sign goes away, this part goes away, and this part gets squared, but maybe let me write it down a bit better. So sine squared of two pi y over a times sine of pi z over a. Um, let's see, actually, sorry. This part is squared. Um, yeah, this is what it is. Okay, so it's sine squared. Yes, that's correct. All right. So now we just have to do this uh, integration again. And fortunately for us, we have already done most of this. So this first part is one half. This last part is also one half. Now the only question is what is the middle part? So that's going to be sine squared of 2 pi over a times a over 2. So this is going to be, this cancels out. And what do we get? We get that psi bb, which I didn't write down there, sorry. Psi bb is going to be 0 because it has a sine of pi, right, which is 0. All right, that was pretty easy. We're getting a lot of zeros here. Let's now go, whoops. Let's now go for psi cc. Okay, so Psi CC, Psi CC is going to be the state 2, 1, 1. Okay, so the 2 is now going to be in here. So the same wave function that we have down here, we can now just edit it and put the 2 in here. Maybe with another color so that it stands out. All right, and we do the same integration. Now, what do we get? So the sine here is going to be sine squared of two pi over a times a over two. We've done this before. Um, let me just double check. Uh, this, wait, it's a over four. Yeah, I was like, something's wrong here. Yeah, it's a over four, sorry, not a over two, my bad. So it's a over four. So we're going to get sine of pi over two, which is one. Okay, and this part right here is also one, and this part right here is one half. So we get that WCC is four V zero. And that completes our matrix. So we can now finally, 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 finally begin to find the determinant. And with that, we'll find the energy levels. Okay, um, so let me take this matrix now and go to a new page. All right, so this is the matrix and we need to find its determinant. So it's going to be easier if we factor out four V zero. So we can just define um, maybe this four V zero times um, a matrix where we just factorize it, but it really doesn't matter which way you, you define it. So maybe let's just call it like this first. So just to make it super clear, 4v0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. Okay, so that's uh, our matrix now, and we want to find the determinant of this. So you don't really need to factor out 4v0, but of course it makes, makes everything much, much simpler. So let's find the determinant of this matrix. So our matrix is 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, uh, minus one, zero, one. And to find the determinant, we have to take, of course, minus lambda, right? It's eigenvalues. Uh, whoops, this is zero, zero minus lambda, so it's only minus lambda. 
right? So we want to find the determinant of this now. So the determinant is going to be 1 minus lambda. And just uh, maybe I should explain it. We explained it in a previous video, but maybe you haven't seen it. Why do we care about the determinant? Because this comes from an equation where we had um, basically our W matrix times these alpha betas, which are the, uh, these eigenvectors basically, times the energy levels, the energy corrections, um, times alpha beta. This is basically what it was. And this is simply an eigenvalue equation, and we need to find the eigenvalues of this matrix, which are going to be the energy levels. Okay, we saw this in detail in a previous video, that's why I didn't really mention it here. Um, so if you are somewhat confused about it, um, then you really should check out that video, which is in the playlist in which this video is as well. Okay, so going back to finding the, the eigenvalues. Okay, so taking now the characteristic equation of this, and we get that 1 minus lambda times, so this times this part times this, right? This times this times this minus 0 times 0, but of course 0 times 0 is super 0, so yeah. So we get minus lambda times 1 minus lambda. Okay, and for this part right here, we have minus 1 times 0, time, 0 times 0, so this part doesn't count, minus this part times this part. So we get minus, minus, minus lambda times minus 1. Okay, so this can be a little bit, you know, confusing. There's a lot of minus signs. This is just linear al algebra, right? We're taking the determinant, so it's this part. Uh, times this times this minus this times this. Okay, that's our classic linear, linear algebra stuff. And this has to be equal to zero. All right, so now we can multiply through. We are going to get one minus lambda squared from the left part times minus lambda. And here on the right hand side, we have four, <laughs> four minus signs. So we get plus lambda and this has to be equal to zero. So here we can already factor out a lambda. So we have lambda 1 minus 1 minus lambda squared equal to 0. So we can already see that lambda 1 has to be equal to 0. There's already our first eigenvalue. So now let's continue finding the other two. So to do that, we go for 1 minus 1 minus lambda squared equal to 0. Right? We, we whoops, I went to the wrong one. We kind of divide by lambda here, not quite um, since it is zero, but what we are basically saying is that, okay, for this to be zero, either this lambda is zero or this thing right here is zero. So we are now going to be see which values of lambda satisfy the second condition. That's basically what we are doing here. All right, so let's now do that. We can just multiply through. This is now just your normal um, uh, second order equation. So it's going to be lambda squared minus to lambda, all of this has a minus in front, of course, uh, plus one, and then plus the one that is already there. So we're going to get minus lambda squared plus two lambda, and these ones cancel out. So here we can simply factor out a lambda once again, and we get lambda factor of minus lambda plus two equal to zero. So we can now see that lambda two is also zero, and lambda three is two. So now we found our three eigenvalues. Now this means that we can finally, 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 finally write down our energy levels. So what are the energy levels? So the energy levels, including their correction, okay, so the energy levels uh, of the first excited state are going to be, now it's going to be the first, uh, the, the energy of the first excited state, right? So the unperturbed excited state plus the first order correction. Well, that's supposed to be a one. Um, and what is the first order correction? Well, that is going to be part exactly what we just found. So we found values for zero, zero, uh, and two. So it's going to be two times now, and remember we found the determinant for um, this matrix right here. So do not forget to include the 4v0. Please don't forget it. We factor it out to make the calculations easier, but do not forget about it. So we multiply by 4v0. So basically it's going to be the ground state energy plus eight times v0. And the other two cases are simply going to be plus zero, right? Because in these two cases, we didn't have uh, 
a correction. So we have 0, 0, and 2, which means that in two of those cases, there isn't going to be a correction. So our triple degeneracy has lifted partially. We still have one state that is doubly degenerate, but we have now, it went from triply degenerate to doubly degenerate. Okay, so these are our energy levels. So I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, make sure to let me know in the comments. Let me know if there's anything else that would be good for you. And I will see you in the next video where we can finally begin discussing the correction to the hydrogen atom. I will see you there.